Hey everyone, it's Blake here from ChessPathways.com, and in today's openings video, we're going to be talking about the Grob opening. The Grob opening is an unusual chess opening that begins with white playing g4 here on move 1. Instead of moving one of those central pawns into the center to grab some central space, white decided to open the game with a flank pawn here, putting it on g4. White would like to develop this bishop to g2, but if that's White's idea, a more popular move would be to play g3, just keeping everything more compact. Uh, playing g4 kind of uh, leaves this pawn rather exposed here, and Black can often attack it rather early after they move this d-pawn and unleash this bishop on the pawn. But nonetheless, White has some ideas here. By advancing this pawn to g4, White could consider advancing it onward to g5 to kick a knight away if the knight comes to f6, for example. So let's go ahead and look at how the game might progress from here. Black can play d5 here, that's probably one of Black's most popular moves, just grabbing the center and immediately attacking this g4 pawn, and White usually will not defend this pawn. Defending this pawn with f3 is a very weakening of the king's diagonal here. Black could just play e5 and threaten checkmate next turn with queen h4, and h3 is a little safer but still very passive. After e5, Black would have the full center. So White's main idea in the Grob opening is to play the Grob Gambit and sacrifice a pawn by playing bishop g2. The point is, after Black takes the pawn here on g4, now White's going to play c4 and try to open this diagonal for their bishop. Now, the funny thing is, and I didn't learn this until very recently, it turns out Black even stands slightly better if they fall for White's trap, and I'm putting trap in air quotes there, but white can actually take this pawn on c4. It looks like black's going to lose this rook in the corner, but after bishop takes b7, knight b to d7, white can go ahead and take that rook, queen takes a8. Black lost the exchange, they lost a rook for a bishop, but black has two pawns for this exchange. They took a pawn on g4 and a pawn on c4, and this rook is under attack, and after f3, black does not have to move this bishop, of course, this pawn is pinned to the rook, black can just play e5 and grab some space and open a line for this bishop to develop. Black actually has great compensation here for being down the exchange. I would actually prefer black in this position. So that's certainly a viable option here for black, after white plays the grob gambit here, bishop g2, bishop takes g4 and c4, black could consider just taking this pawn. But most players here with black have chosen not to sacrifice the exchange, there's certainly nothing wrong with black just playing c6, trying to blunt this bishop a little bit along its diagonal, and black simply is happy with their extra pawn here. White's idea is that after c takes d5, c takes d5, they can play queen b3 with a double attack here on the d5 pawn and the b7 pawn, but black's also going to get good compensation here for losing the pawn back. Black can play knight f6 and just allow white to take the b7 pawn, and after knight b to d7, this rook's going to be good on the b-file. For example, after d4, black can even sacrifice a pawn here and play rook b8, White gets to take on a7, and now queen to c8. Now white's the one who's up a pawn, but black is actually totally winning in this position. This move not only threatens to take on c1, it also threatens to trap the queen with rook back to a8. For example here, if white played knight to c3, rook a8, this queen is actually trapped. So that's no good for white. And in one game, white tried to play bishop f4 in this position, but white quickly got destroyed. Black played e5 here, attacking this bishop and opening a line for their uh, bishop here on f8. Another pawn sacrifice from black, and after d takes e5, bishop c5, queen a4, rook b4, forking the bishop and queen, it's become completely clear that this opening was a total disaster for white. Just to show one more example of white's greed not paying off here, we looked at white playing c takes d5 and then queen b3, White has also tried playing queen b3 right away, and one game here continued with just e6, once again just letting white take this b7 pawn if they want to, and after queen takes b7, knight b to d7, queen c6, white is now temporarily up a pawn, but after rook c8, queen a6, and rook takes c4, white's once again in trouble here. Black's development is just so much better, and this bishop here on g2 is really blocked off here by this solid d5 pawn. This game continued knight a3, rook c8, White took yet another pawn, queen takes a7, but now bishop c5, and things are not looking good for white. White's going to have to watch out for this weak f2 pawn, Black can think about playing queen f6 or queen h4 soon, adding on pressure there. After c4, c6, we've seen that it doesn't work out so well for white to try to be greedy here, but really, what else can white do? White sacrificed this g4 pawn, and if they get nothing for it, then black is just clearly better. If, for example, white tries to play b3 here, just uh, defending their c4 pawn, 
Black could just play e5 now, and really White's whole opening really makes no sense. It doesn't make sense to sacrifice a pawn and then really get nothing for it as your opponent takes control of the full center. So in light of that, it looks like Black stands very well here after Bishop takes g4, and White might want to consider playing this passive move h3 just because these lines look so bad for White. So we can briefly consider this line. It's never been as popular as playing the Grob Gambit with bishop g2, but it might be worth it for white to spin this tempo. So black can play e5 here and grab control of the full center, but now white can play bishop g2 and then execute their idea of trying to strike back at this center without sacrificing a pawn. And I actually pulled a full game here, played in 1938 where white was successful in this aim. It wouldn't be right for me to make a video on the Grob and just show white getting killed every time, so here's an example of white being successful. Black played c6 in this game, and now white played d4, and after e4, now white played c4, again trying to tear down the center and open this diagonal back up for their bishop, and white can still have ideas to play queen b3 and knight c3 and generate pressure here on the d-pawn. So bishop d6, knight c3, knight e7, queen b3. Black is considered to be better in this position because of their space advantage. Black can castle here, and it looks like white's threatening to, to take this pawn here in d5, but white actually cannot win a pawn. Go ahead and pause your video if you want to think about why. Okay, if you're back with me. So it looks like white has three attackers on this pawn, and black only has two defenders, but there's the, uh, the discovered attack trick with the bishop here, getting out of the way and unleashing the queen. So if white took here on d5, black takes back, white takes a pawn, the knights get exchanged, and it looks like white came out a pawn ahead, but now there's bishop b4, and black is going to win the queen. So white cannot take that pawn yet, so after black castles, uh, they simply played bishop g5, black played f6, now white played c takes d5, and black threw in this move queen b6, uh, trying to exchange this queen off because otherwise there could be a check along this diagonal now that this f pawn is missing. I'll just show it why, uh, why black can't just take back the pawn anymore. If black took here, now after knight takes d5, knight takes d5, queen takes d5 is check, so black does not have time for bishop b4. So instead queen b6, white exchanged there on b6, Knight takes e4, and white was now better in this position and went on to win. This is Mross versus Ropsdorf, if you want to look this game up for yourself in your database. Uh, but probably black should have responded some other way to bishop g5. By playing f6, they allowed white's plan to come to fruition, and all of white's pressure generated here on the d5 pawn paid off. For example, after bishop g5, it was probably time for black to admit they can't maintain this pawn chain, all of white's pressure here is too much. And after d takes c4, queen takes c4, black doesn't lose a pawn, but white did get rid of the black pawn chain, and now this e4 pawn could be a target. Black is probably still a bit better here, though. Black can play bishop e6, and black still has a lead in development, but it would just be a game from here. All right, thank you very much for watching, and please make sure you visit chesspathways.com and get signed up. I'll put a link down in the description. It's totally free, only takes five seconds to join, and when you do, I will send you a free move-by-move -move guide to chess thinking. I'm trying to help more chess players become masters, hopefully in a fraction of the time that it took me. Thanks, and I'll see you there.